Hello, welcome to the Mythology Manifest. For today's video, I am going to be talking about an Egyptian deity, a goddess whose appearance and role has changed throughout history. Today is actually International Cat Day, which is why I decided to do this video, as she is the Egyptian goddess of cats. Her name is Bastet. I hope you enjoy this video. So, Bastet, sometimes referred to as Bast, is the daughter of the Egyptian sun god, Ra. She is the goddess of the home, felines, childbirth and protection, and because of this she is closely linked with Greek goddesses such as Artemis and Aletheia. The goddess was born out of Bubastis, where she was a patron goddess, and over time her name, power and influence spread to other regions of Egypt where they began to worship her heavily. This eventually gained her a cult following in other parts of the country, including Memphis. Bastet is associated with femininity and cats. Although she initially began as a goddess of the sun based on her father's powers, her appearance was predominantly feline, and it changed over time from a wild lioness to a woman with the head of a domesticated cat, and she is often portrayed as a female cat in a seated position. Bastet's roles and appearance changed as time went on. Originally, she protected her father, Ra, from harm, and in this role, she primarily protected him from harm from his arch enemy, the snake god Apep. She began as a goddess of the sun based on her parentage and she looks like a feline. This changed from a wild fiery lioness to a domesticated cat, which is normally portrayed seated calmly with watchful eyes. As her appearance changed to become less intimidating, her powers increased. For example, Bastet gained the power of presiding over childbirth and expectant mothers, some time after the domestication of house cats in ancient Egypt. This rule symbolised both her growing power and influence and high fertility levels associated with domestic cats. Later, the goddess acquired a third duty, which was protecting people against evil spirits and contagious diseases. Although it was not a main responsibility, she also had the unique power to charm snakes and fight the effects of poisonous venom, which was a trait attributed to cats among Egyptians. The people of Egypt, specifically in Bubastis and Memphis, adored Bastet. In her honour, entire cemeteries of mummified house cats appeared in Bubastis and Memphis during the Ptolemaic periods. Worshippers often gave offerings of small bronze statues to the goddess. She was also honoured through jewellery especially amulets made of gold moulded into the shape of cats, as they were her symbol, but also because they connoted wealth and royalty. Bastet was often portrayed wearing multiple body piercings and a necklace with a wedjat eye, which symbolises wholeness and provides protection. Bastet's image is also influenced by politics. As the Greeks grew in power, they eventually conquered surrounding lands of Egypt, and so Egyptian mythology changed to reflect Greek influence because of this. So during stories from the Ptolemaic dynasty, Bastet is often linked to Greek goddesses and even shares overlapping powers, as I mentioned earlier. In many works of art, Bastet is depicted holding a sistrum in her right hand, which is a percussion instrument popular in ancient Egypt, and an aegis with a lion's head in her left hand, which is a protective shield made of armour and she is often depicted surrounded by kittens. Bastet also has connections with the sun and solar system in some stories too, due to the controlling influence of her father. These depictions are more common in earlier stories and regional mythology. Based on this association, she is sometimes also called the Eye of the Moon. She married Ptah, a god of creation, rebirth and craftsmen, and had two sons, Nephitim and Mars. The Egyptians worshipped Bastet with a yearly festival in her honour that attracted over 700,000 people yearly. During these festivals, people would drink large amounts of wine to honour Bastet, as wine was a sacred drink associated with the goddess. During these festivals, and sometimes in their own homes, women wanting children showed her amulets with their desired number of offspring and prayed that she would grant their wishes, and often she did. And that is all of the important information that you need for a basic understanding of this goddess. I hope you enjoyed this video.
If you did, please like, comment with suggestions for my future videos, or subscribe. And please let people you know who love mythology know about my channel. This video will be going in a playlist called the Egyptian Mythology Manifest, which I will add to with more Egyptian myth videos over time, as I have done with the Greek, Roman and Norse Mythology Manifest playlists, as well as the Revision, Trojan War, Reviews and Mini Myths playlists. If you would like to, you could also follow the channel's Twitter page at the Mythology MA1, which there is a link to in the description below. On Twitter, I post pretty much daily with mythological facts and information on my next video. I've also done a couple of blogs about keeping classics alive, the Trojan War and the patriarchy in the ancient world. There are links to these in the below description, so please do read and feel free to let me know what you think of them. Let's keep classics alive. I will see you next time on the Mythology Manifest.